Hey everybody, we are in the town of Holden. We are talking with the folks at the Department of Public Works. And uh, young man, if you would be kind enough to introduce yourself and tell us your title here. We won't ask you what you do, we'll just ask you what your title is. Sure, uh, John Woodsmall, Director of Public Works for the town of Holden. And John, we want to uh, welcome you here to this edition of the Holden Pattern, which is sponsored by our friends just down the street at Brilla Coffee. Brilla Coffee Roasters, not Barilla, but Brilla Coffee Roasters and our friends at Lamro Ford. And you have a smile on your face from ear to ear because you now have a brand new playground. And I don't mean a playground where little kids come and, <laughs> and have swings and stuff like that, but it's been so long in coming to get all of Holden's uh, fix em up people in one location. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is just an absolutely beautiful facility. Um, first of all, tell me a little bit about the town of Holden uh, as far as population is concerned and uh, the work that you do here. Sure. Uh, so Holden's roughly 19,000 people. Uh, we have over 120 miles, uh, center line miles of roadway that we maintain. Uh, we have over 30 miles of sidewalks. We have over 70 miles of uh, sewer mains and water mains. We service about uh, two-thirds of the population on public water and public sewer. We have uh, a 34-person uh, department, and we do, um, if, if you're not calling for police or fire or light, you're pretty much calling us for something that you need from the town. Mm -hmm. uh, we take care of the roads, the sidewalks, all of the town buildings, all of the town fields, the cemeteries, uh, the water and sewer uh, systems, <laughs> and uh, pretty much anything else that they decide to throw at us. We uh, jack of all trades uh, type, type organization and people need help, we try to respond. Okay, now you said 34 people. I asked you that before when we were walking through the building. And I expected you to say 75 or 80 based upon me having lived in this town for 40 years, knowing it pretty well, and knowing the efficiency in which this particular department runs and the streets are plowed, the sidewalks are plowed, the schools are, are plowed, the, the lawns, et cetera, are groomed. Um, to have this new facility and taking people from two or three other properties in town under one roof, from a operations perspective, it's gonna really make the town even more efficient than it, than it really was. That's, that's certainly one of the goals. Um, we run a very lean outfit, we, we have we're very lucky. We're very lucky to have the building that we have now. Uh, and we've always been very lucky to have the tools and equipment that to do all the work that we need to do. Um, our folks take a lot of pride in what they do, and we do it all pretty much in house. Uh, with the snow and ice operations, we do not use outside contractors. Um, that's a, a privilege based off of our ability to get stuff done mm -hmm. and the equipment and the types of snow and ice equipment that we have. Um, it, it, it makes for long days and nights for the, for the crews. Right. And I think it should be pointed out that even though Holden is contiguous to Worcester, because of the elevation of Holden, well, similar to Paxton, you could have a totally different weather pattern in Holden where you're getting snow or sleet or ice in Holden, where Worcester might be getting rain. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a lot of the roads in town are, count, you know, not county roads, but country type roads. Mm -hmm. Um, but you, you get it all done, and I think that's a tribute. And, um, of course, by the time this video comes out, there'll probably be a major storm, <laughs> and we'll get to actually see how well you do. But uh, now you've got your new building, and um, take me through the building. Um, you've got areas for your trucks that you never had before that were sitting outside. Mm -hmm. Describe a little bit about that area. Sure. So we have a, a large vehicle storage bay now that allows us to get all of our diesel trucks inside, our diesel equipment inside, and protects it from the wear and tear of uh, sitting outside. Uh, it allows for faster responses in emergency situations. It, 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 it's, it's just such a sea change from what we had. And, and, and everything that we now have here, the, in, in my mind, the biggest improvements that we have is that it's gonna be safe and clean and healthy for our workers. For your workers, and right. And in the two garage facilities that we've had, um, 
the, the I've oftentimes been amazed that people kept on showing up to work <laughs> in, in the conditions that they had to work Well, in. and it was amazing that the work got done. Yes. You know, you'd see all the trucks heading down, um, I still call it Iandoli's, but down where Dunkin' Donuts is in that order there, and mm -hmm. they're coming out and, and that type of thing. But, um, you know, you mentioned diesel trucks indoors, and, you know, people should know that because of New England weather and cold temperatures, it's almost mandatory that diesel trucks uh, are, are heated during the night as opposed to... Um, you know, gas vehicles which can stay outside. Yes. Um, I noticed when we were taking our tour that your trucks already, they're ready to go. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a military thing. You're ready to go. That There's already salt in the, in the sanders, mm -hmm. or salters, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, you're ready to go because last night was supposed to be a, a storm. You were ready. Yep. Uh, it being, uh, the, the, there's a significant sea change in philosophy and how to handle snow and ice operations over the past 20 years in local municipal government. And you're better off being ready, getting out early, and trying to beat the storm rather than being Catch reactive. Up. And you're, you're behind. As soon as, as soon as you see the, store, the road is white and you haven't done anything, you're behind. Mm -hmm. And so we always try to be ahead of it. Uh, we might start pre-treating before a storm even starts. Uh, just with the, the solid salt. Um, but having that, this indoor space, we are now able to, um, we can put our front plows on the trucks uh, if we need to in advance. Uh, typically we try to do salting and then put our plows on. Uh, at the old facility, we had one, one, one loader that we had to take off a route who would have to come in and haul each plow in individually yep. and everybody would gather around and bunch of ants trying to get the plow on real quick. Now each spot will, can have their plow in front of the truck, pull up, hook up, Bang. back up and back out on the road. And you know, in addition to snow, which obviously is, you know, the time of year when we're creating this video, um, you do work for other departments in town. I noticed there was an ambulance that was, I mean, that's not under your purview, that's police and fire. Mm -hmm. um, but that's got to be a savings to the town that you can do the mechanical work in-house as opposed to uh, waiting in line at a uh, facility. Certainly. We, we provide all the vehicle maintenance for uh, the light department vehicles, police, fire trucks, ambulances, uh, senior center vans, any of the other admin vehicles that any other department might have, and we do all of our own stuff as well. We have three full-time mechanics uh, with a fantastic new mechanic uh, work area, a modern, clean, uh, environmentally secure and compliant workspace that uh, there's, there's not much that we can't do in here our, in, in house ourselves we mm -hmm. have the computers that we need to, to read all the modern um, uh, diagnostics on, on new on current day vehicles and we may still send stuff out more specialized stuff there's things that we don't do regularly enough that we wouldn't want to do on fire trucks in but terms of pumps, setups, so. or ladders and things yep. like that, uh, booms on electrical trucks. We don't get into that. We let the experts who deal with those every day do, but okay. uh, pretty much we can do everything else. Again, we're staying in the winter thing. We, we saw the salt in the trucks, and you've got a giant uh, salt shed that will be coming, into, uh, coming online very soon. Um, and with salt, it brings a cousin a few months later or years <laughs> later called salt. I mean, excuse me, called rust, mm -hmm. okay? Now, as I was walking back, I saw this room that looked like a um, local car wash on steroids. It is. Mm -hmm. So all the equipment that is salting and plowing and having all that stuff on it, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm not using technical terminology here. It's, it's salt that will rust. You're saving maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars if you can get a few more years out of a piece of equipment. Talk about that, um, that gigantic car wash on steroids. Sure. So uh, before we moved in here, we just had a simple um, hose, and, hose and, 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 you know, we, ha we had a, a, a steam cleaner, you know, pressure washer. Yep, yep. Um, its efficiency is, was, was doubtful. But it was done outside, right? It was done outside. outside. So, yep. you know, it might be 30 three degrees outside and they're washing down vehicles. Uh, now we have a dedicated wash bay 
that um, we, we actually have a big knockdown pad that we can use on the outside to get you know heavy clumps of, of mud and things off the trucks first and they go into this wash bay it has an undercarriage jet system and a side jet system that you know, they slowly pull through and knocks all the heavy stuff gets underneath the, the undercarriage gets into those nooks and crannies where salt just loves to hide they can pull out then they get out and they have handheld um, power shampoo washers and they can wash down the entire trucks we have our brooms and our, bu uh, bu our buckets so we can uh, our, our mops and our buckets to really fine tune it and, right. and, and really that's, clean again, them. That's not just for your department. That's not just for highway, All but it, you know it can be cruisers, it can be ambulances, it can be everything, everything in town. Exactly. Now, we've been talking a lot about the back end of the building um, and talking about you know the snowing, snow plowing equipment. But you've got really three main divisions here. You've got buildings and grounds, you've got highways and uh, uh, water, and water and sewer, water and then mechanics, and then admin and engineering. Okay, so everybody's under one roof. Everybody's under one roof. Yeah. We previously were spread across three different sites. Everybody's now consolidated into one. Definitely. So we want to thank you so much for taking time from your busy day to tour the facility here. And um, uh, we should, <laughs> you know, one thing I haven't even said is that where we're located. Tell us where we're located. We are located at 18 Industrial Drive. Just Which off of Main Street. Just off Main Street, right by the, um, uh, well, where the railroad crossing is. Yes. Railroad crossing is, and uh, people want to drive by, uh, take a look at it. It's a uh, beautiful building. Mm -hmm. We're very like, very lucky and, and very thankful for the support that we got from the citizens and, ta and taxpayers in town. And we want to thank you. We want to thank Brilla Coffee Roasters in Lamoureux Ford for sponsoring the Holden section on the 016 and wish you the best.